Welcome to Boom In Your Face, a platform for indie artists and musicians to come and share their new music or projects, as well as discuss topics about the music industry and the community at large. Boom In Your Face has two meanings. One is that boom in your face from the music that you're listening to, but the other boom in your face is when someone assumes the situation is one way and boom in your face is totally wrong and something totally different. So on occasion, we discuss those boom in your face moments, so watch out that someone might be you. Listeners, if you'd like to share your Boom In Your Face music or projects, or share your Boom In Your Face moment, or just want to join us in the conversation, reach out and email me at boominyourface616 at gmail.com, or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter, like, subscribe, and share the episodes. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Welcome. Hello, and welcome to Boom In Your Face. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Thank you very much for having me, Mary. Oh, I appreciate you even coming on and spending this time with me and sharing all your information, your talent with my audience. So introduce yourself and let them know what you do and where they can reach you. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're located. My name is Amani Roberts, also known as Amani Experience or DJ Amro. I'm a professional DJ, DJ all over the world, an author, a professor, a live streamer, and a music producer. Um, if you want to follow me, if you want to find me, it's at Amani Experience on the socials, A-M-A-N-I Experience, and that's Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn is Amani Roberts, twitch.tv backslash Amani Experience. Um, yeah, that covers the socials. All right. Well, you can also get all this information off the site and we'll be able to link in with you. So you don't want to miss any of Amani's uh, information. So now... You have a lot of stuff to unpack tonight because you are a man with many hats. So yes. what we're going to start off with, is, we'll start off with the DJ portion since that is in your name. Yes. Uh, what do you want to know? Like a DJ? I wonder how did you get music? into it? I mean, was oh, your okay. always a love of music or how did you go from, you know, a student in school and then all of a sudden now I'm DJ rocking around the world? There you go. I uh, I saw Biz Marquis, may he rest okay. in peace. Um, at a club when I was in D.C. I grew up in the D.C. area and went to Howard University. I saw Bismarck at this club called Quigley's in downtown mm -hmm. D.C. He set it off. It was amazing. That's when I decided I wanted to be a DJ. But um, I didn't really think at the time it was a le legitimate career. So I graduated from school, started mm -hmm. working for Marriott and hotels across the country. Okay. But I would always keep an eye on DJs in all the different cities I lived in. I'd go see them. Mm -hmm. Once I got to California, L.A., uh, one of my close friends said, you know, you should go check out this DJ school. I think you would like it because I had already started to DJ, but I need to really elevate my game. Okay. So I went to Scratch Academy and learned that DJ um, skills there. Went through the whole program in about a year. That was life changing. And then from there, I just continued to grow my career, DJing, networking, getting more opportunities, improving as a DJ. Right. Um, and another big step was when the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. I started to DJ a lot on Twitch and that really helped me grow my um, market, so to speak, across the world. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how I got into DJing and how it, it continues to keep me very active. Now, for many, they may already know, but I didn't know that you could actually go to a school because when I came up, we didn't have no school to scratch. <laughs> we just did it on our two turntables and our mixer and we went for it. So that's news exactly. for me to know. In New yeah. Millennium, they got a scratch school. So that's awesome. Well, and, you, would, you, would know, you would know the the creator of the school, like Jam Master J. From oh, Rundi uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. He started the school in New York. Unfortunately, he was murdered six months later, but the school continued oh, all okay. across that's, the country. Mm -hmm. I think their campus is now in New York, LA, Miami, I think Denver, Chicago, and maybe Philly or somewhere. So okay. the campus is across the country. Um, I was just very honored to go. I had an amazing group of instructors, like world famous DJs who are my instructors. Right. And um, it really set me up for success. Oh, okay. Well, I am a native New Yorker, but I did leave <laughs> New York long before all these things started transpiring. So yes, may he rest in peace, but at least he left a legacy for DJs mm -hmm. like yourself to come up behind and still yeah. learn the craft, perfect it, which is awesome, and yes. then grow and blossom. Absolutely. That's exactly. amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so you're going to be one of the many that's getting ready to be in that hip-hop museum up in the Bronx. 
Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Whenever it opens, I'll be there for sure. Won't everybody? We just we <laughs> love and want to support that. Yes. Now, yes. how did you go from DJing? Well, first we're going back up to what was your major that you graduated from Howard? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I went to Howard for undergrad. My major was uh, hospitality management and finance. Okay. And that was my major. And then more recently, I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston, and mm -hmm. I got my master's in music business. And that's I did, um, the, I did the same thing, but I went to full sale. But I understand what you're saying. Okay. There's yeah. nothing wrong with shopping in your schools, people, your skills, people. You need to get out there. And if you don't yes. know, educate yourself because you might think you know everything. But trust me, the formal training is going to teach you all the behind the intricacies of what you need to learn and know. So I commend you for that because that's what you have Amen. to be a life learner. Amen. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now tell me about your book. So my book, so my book, DJs Mean Business, it mm -hmm. takes you through the time slots of a DJ set and relates it to growing a business um, or growing your own personal brand. So for mm -hmm. example, uh, 10 o'clock, the set starts, I'm in the club or the bar, just trying to fill the room out, keep the people there, and right. then, you know, attract anyone else that wants to come in. And that's really like, if you're in a business, you're trying to identify your ideal client. If you're, if you're just trying to grow your own personal brand, you're trying to figure out what's your mission, and then you go from there. That's the 10 o'clock. Um, okay. I'm going to fast forward and skip through some time spots, but like 11 o'clock is like the tra troubleshooting uh, hour okay. because something always goes wrong in the DJ booth, whether it be a speaker going out, computer crashing, record scratching, needles, dusty, anything, but mm -hmm. you can never stop the music. Same thing in business. Maybe, you know, the product that you thought was going to be very popular isn't popular at all, but something else is is gaining attention. How do you shift and, and steer that way? Or if it's all your own personal career, maybe the career that you went to school for is not what you have found yourself in. How do you shift but keep going forward? Um, then we get to prime time, midnight, got to keep the dance floor packed, hit after hit, keep the people right. singing, dancing long in business. How are you growing sales? week over week, month over month, year over year, you just want to continue to grow. And mm -hmm. then for, for you, if, if it's your own career, like how are you continuing to grow? How are you continuing to advance, get promoting? Like that's prime time. Then we get to one of my favorite times, which is like kind of towards the end of my DJ sets. I love slow jams. I'm a slow okay. jam guy. Mm -hmm. So I was dropping a few at the end of the set, but really for businesses, Right. A lot of businesses use nostalgia to reinvent themselves or to introduce new products. My favorites right. are like Adidas, Stan mm -hmm. Smith's shoes is really popular. Nintendo, they do a great job of using nostalgia from back in the day to introduce current products. And then Old Spice. So that's okay. how brands do it. And then, you know, if it's your own personal, you know, brand or career, like how are you reaching back to some of the times when you were most successful and using that to promote yourself and to grow as a person in the current state? Um, so that's kind of a prime time. And then, you know, the set ends, it's two o'clock and then feedback. You always want to get feedback to figure out what went well, what you, could you improve on? Yes. I was fortunate that when I was DJing a lot in clubs, I also drove for Uber. So okay. I'd go outside, pack up my bag, turn on the little meter, and I'd frequently pick up people who I used to, who were, who were in the same club I was working at. So I'd drive them <laughs> home, I'd say, what do you think of the music, this and that. And then only at the end, I'd be like, you know, I was a DJ that was in the club that night, so I appreciate the feedback and they bug out, but it was really, really mm -hmm. great way to get feedback and businesses, right. and, you know, people can do that as well. So that's kind of the summary of the book. Um, and that, that's what it takes you through the night, a night through the eyes of the DJ and how you can grow your career or grow a business. Well, you know, what is what I heard out of everything was great. All your material is great, but I'm going to underscore what you've lived yourself on why you can speak to everyone is pivoting your career of when you went to school for one thing and how yeah. life can shift and you still become gainfully employed and move forward. So, I mean, you lived it. So, I mean, you're, you're an expert in the field. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I, thank you. And I'm still mm -hmm. learning to this day. I'm still learning right. and involving myself. So absolutely. Well, that's life. If you stop learning, okay, you already know what the next thing is going to be. <laughs> this is true, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, yes. That means you're not growing no further. I mean, everything dies when you don't grow. So that's, that's how right. life goes. Yeah. So now you said you're DJing, mm -hmm. an author. Correct. What else is your other hat? So a professor at a okay. university and so uh, like live streaming. Yes, so that's what I do. And professional speaker. So yes. So, okay, don't skip over professor now. What do you <laughs> I teach at California State University, Fullerton. I teach in okay. the School of Business, and mm -hmm. I teach um, a few classes. I teach uh, entertainment operations, 
Okay. I teach um, strategic business seminar, which is like a case study based class, which all seniors have to take and pass. It's like um, reviews. It uses everything they learn in school and you apply mm -hmm. it to these case studies and we do high level business. Mm -hmm. So I teach that. I teach music business. Okay. So I teach music business there. And then at some semesters, I might also pick up like a project management class mm -hmm. or uh, entertainment money management. So those are kind of okay. my the classes that I teach this semester is mm -hmm. music business entertain operations and strategic business seminar. Okay, that's I enjoy your wheelhouse. It all goes together and, and um exactly. that's how you get further. Yes. And yes. also a lot of times artists don't think of themselves as entrepreneurs, but that's who they are really. And so they uh -huh. it's important for them to really understand the business so that way they'll know what they're walking into, what they're dealing with when they get in front of people, even though you hire somebody else, I recommend all artists to hire somebody to represent you, but still yeah. know the business for yourself. Do you yeah, agree? I agree. One, well, I agree. Mm -hmm. One of my passions is I want to close the knowledge gap between artists. And right. I'm thinking the music industry specifically, like new mid tier artists, even up and coming artists, mm -hmm. experienced artists, close the knowledge gap between them and the music industry, like the labels and everything, because there's a big knowledge right. gap. And you see countless examples of people who just don't understand how the industry operates. And I just want them to protect themselves so that when they make decisions, right. that they understand the repercussions of their decisions and there's no questions on the back end. And I find that that's a huge issue now. I mean, you see headlines mm -hmm. every week every week where someone wants to get out of their contract or they didn't right. know that they threw away their master recordings for years. So the knowledge, knowledge is power. And I want to share right. that with everyone. It's a balance. It's a balance because just like you're saying, each issue is different. But yes, you get into these contracts sometimes and you be so excited that you're going to have the exposure, but you're not thinking of, okay, now two, three years out when I do take off and then what's going on with my monies. And then a lot of times they don't understand that when you, somebody's building you up as a career, because I'm have to speak for both sides now. Yeah. yeah when the label yeah. builds you up, is a lot of money in that engine to get you popular. Yes, they're so, investing a lot of money. They're investing the a lot of power, money. Connections. I understand that completely. But mm -hmm. as long as you know, and you know, right. like then that's the key. If you have the knowledge, then you can make the decision. Because I'm pro mm -hmm. artist. I'm Correct. not anti-label at all. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying because it's important, but they, all artists need to understand the financial piece because you saying, oh, they put me on tour, they didn't paid for this, that, and the other. No, not really. When you start making the money that they hope they invested in, they're going to retain all, re, re, yeah. get reimbursed for all those things that, that champagne that came up at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's coming out there. Right. Yes, that's you yes. paying, spending your money. Yes. And I love to share it like an advance is a loan. Mm -hmm. An advance is a loan. That's the first concept. If you can understand that, you're going to be ahead of many people. You just go go spend in the advance and thinking they're going right. to get that money back and I got quickly. a good check. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So do you teach this in your class? Absolutely. Um, and I teach this in my entertainment operations class, and then we okay. go really in depth in the music business class. But mm -hmm. I teach them about how, you know, advances are loans. I teach them that how important it is for musicians to get the songwriting credits so you can get your publishing so that if your song is played on the radio, you want to get compensated that way, not just right. from the mechanicals when things are sold. Correct. I teach them about how to calculate streaming revenue income, contracts, 360 deals. Uh, we go through everything, touring. Well, one right. of the funnest exercises, which I was surprised at, you know, and most of my students, they born and raised in California. They, they've been further east than the California line, maybe to Vegas. So right. we have to go over geography because they need to know if you plan a tour and you have your artist start in Miami, you can't go from Miami to Chicago, to Boston, to Atlanta, to DC. Right. You need to have a circuitous route that yeah. makes sense. So mm -hmm. that's a fun activity. They plan out a tour and they're so surprised. They're like, oh, now it makes sense. Now they understand how right. artists geography. along the way. Geography. So we go over it all and um, it's exciting. I love it when they understand, you see the light bulbs go off mm -hmm. and they understand about like streaming revenue and how that artists nowadays have to do more. They have to really tour to get the revenue. They have streaming. That's kind of a small foundation. They right. have merch deals, sponsorships. So it all comes together. And um, I really love teaching it. The streaming part, as you just mentioned, is more for you to get notoriety than to really think you're going to get riches because that's not where the money's at. <laughs> it's not but where the money's at it is a way for you to get the money because, you know, of, like I said, the exposure. 
Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, marketing, like word of mouth marketing, listen to stream, you're on a playlist, you get that, you know, you might get some revenue, but it's not not a lot. But if you just kind of put your music there, you'll get some spins, but really you want to start to get the uh, big tours, get the big sponsorships, um, and then go from there and figure out the best way for you to get your 1000 true fans. Exactly. And that's something that you could teach about having true fans in the oh, super yeah. fan level. Mm -hmm. so that's awesome. Yeah, that yeah. keep them with you. Yes. Now, with all these hats, yes. when do you get time to DJ? Well, I DJ two two nights a week on Twitch. So I live stream, you know, Friday oh, okay, evening gotcha. and, and Sunday. And then I do gigs. Like um, I had a gig in Palm Springs for three days mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. I'm working on a gig. Uh, next Saturday, I have a, a private event. And then I believe the following week I have a gig I have to go to in, in DC. So it kind of spaces out and I'm able to kind of uh, take it as it comes in and plan a few. And because I'm a professor and with the emergence of like more hybrid opportunities, right. like for example, when I'm in DC, I'm going to also be teaching my class because by the time my gig is over, it's still daytime here. So I can right. log onto Zoom and teach class. So. The flexibility that's offered by being a professor fits very well with the DJ life, which is why I love it. Right. And so I can still plan and travel and tour and DJ and have an online class one day. So for now, it works out pretty well for me. That's awesome. Do you ever do a Zoom with your class while you're at an event to let them see you actually in action? But have you that's done that? That's a good idea. That's a mm -hmm. good idea. Not at an event. However, mm -hmm. Once a time, one time a semester, I'll have an online class from my home just because I won't go to school. Right. And at the beginning of each class, I'll start off by DJ. And they oh, bug out okay. about that. So that I'll start off by DJ in the first 10 minutes, just so they can see me kind of doing some things. I have the mm -hmm. virtual setup and then we'll have class. So I try to do that once a semester virtually. And so that helps. And then sometimes my students will tune in when I'm streaming on Twitch live on like a Sunday night or maybe a Friday. Oh, I got you. Mm -hmm. So they kind of see, they know I'm working. Like, you know, I'm one of those <laughs> professors that I'm working too. Like, you know, I'm still getting it in the industry. You might wind up being the Tom Joyner of DJ. Who knows? You know, he had to beat <laughs> that Tom trail. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. He had to beat that trail for us to be able to open up the radio market that way. I know. So somebody yes, has to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, I mean, do you have a DJ club started yet or not? I'm going to have to start it for you. You might have to start it for me. I don't have a DJ club yet. <laughs> okay. you know, I'm just I'm still finding my way to that. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, all things are possible once you put it out there as an idea. You know what I mean? I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So now going back to your book, mm -hmm. how long did it take you to write your book? So I think I started it around July of one year, June, July writing. I hit mm -hmm. kind of a block where I took like three or four weeks off and I finished okay. up March of the following year. Mm -hmm. Sent it to edits. I got the edits done, did more writing. I think the edits were pretty much completed by like September. We shot the cover and mm -hmm. it came out. Once everything was probably tied up and done like in December or January, and then it came out like April, April 14th, 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it was a good uh, year and a half total process. I'm writing another book now, so we'll see how this one takes me. Um, but that was how long it took me for the first one. But what's going to be your topic for this book? Okay, you're going to like this one. Here's the topic. Okay, go ahead. The topic is, why are there no longer any Black R&B groups on the Billboard charts since 2004? This was my thesis at Berkeley. I'm mm -hmm. very passionate about this subject, and okay. I love writing about it and doing the research because mm -hmm. it's something I grew up with. Right, exactly. Plus, since you had to do it for a class, it gives you a lot of material that you can already yes. draw from. So yes. why not? Yes. That would be the next evolution of it. Always looking to interview people. I'm trying to get to, you know, I'd love to interview baby faces on my list. Quincy mm -hmm. Jones, Diddy, Boyz II Men. Um, I'd love to interview like TLC, SWV, some of these Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, I suppose it hits over like five or six decades. Like it's an amazing group. And they started as a rock band, pretty much started as like a rock band back in the day. So some amazing stories, which I'll share throughout the whole book as we cover the right. history from 1950s all the way to 2000, the 2000s. Um, Destiny's Child was probably the last biggest black army group to really do well until Beyonce went solo. Um, and that's kind of where it stopped. And we examine why it stopped and what led to that point. It'll be interesting reading. Yeah, the funny yeah, thing you. about you mentioning TLC 
is their DJ okay. is an alumni of Full Sail, okay. Leslie Bratwith, which is, he's so down to earth and cool and I can understand why he has gone so far. But he's uh-huh. their sound engineer, excuse me, which is the same thing. Some are sensitive about being compared the same, but I mean, it's audio. So it mm-hmm. falls under the umbrella. But okay. yeah, that's the sound engineer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, small world. Very small world. So, mm-hmm. you know, love to chat with him and get his opinion since he was there in the room with him. Oh, he's been there since the beginning. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Who knows what can happen? Yeah. In my class, we do a case study on TLC, the biggest selling group in the U.S. ever. Mm-hmm. Biggest selling group in the U.S. ever. And they went bankrupt twice. And mm-hmm. so we talk about why that happened and lessons learned and everything. So I have a certain love for TLC and what they went through. Yes. T Boz is excellent as well. So that'd be a great interview if you yeah. make it happen. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens with happen. Boz, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Trying to make it happen. <laughs> yes, he's a beautiful spirit. Yeah. So now, what is on your list of next? Now, you told me about your upcoming DJ, but mm-hmm. what does your calendar look like, we'll say, for the next two to three months? Um, Like teaching, because we just started a semester. So right now it's like early to mid-February. So we're like week three or four of class. Um, I'm working on this course that I want to create for musicians so they can kind of, you know, subscribe to it and learn on a weekly, monthly basis. That's a big right. project for this year in the book. And then just some gigs coming up in like April, March. Um, and then looking for some professional speaking opportunities. I have this one uh, speaking opportunity for this conference in London coming up in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, so a combination like DJ gigs, professional mm-hmm. speaking. Then we get to like the summertime when school's off and we more gigs there. So it's got a, it's got a good a good counter, a good mix. I'm excited. Um, this will probably be the first time post-pandemic where things are even more fully open. Right. So that's very encouraging too. Yeah, because yeah. everything is just really starting to really blossom out and people are starting to feel much more secure about, you know, being in public spaces. So, I agree. Yeah. Me included. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, exactly. I mean, that's everybody. We're just getting into that part of life. Our new norm. Yes, this is true. Right. The new norm. We'll learn. We'll adjust. We'll make it happen. So I feel good. So the course is going to be an e-learning. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up like as an e-learning, and then there's a community aspect to it also where you can meet people, network. So you'll pay a certain fee, and then after you finish the course, there'll be a monthly fee that you can continue to pay to have access to the network with like different interviews, exclusive chats, Q and A, mm-hmm. mentorship. Just trying to set it all up and get it get it ready to go. That is awesome mm-hmm. that you've taken your degree. You've actually melded. You didn't really didn't pivot from what you started with, but you, what you did is you melded it all together and now yeah. making a conglomerate out of all your experience and knowledge. Yeah, that's the goal. Thank you for mm-hmm. recognizing that. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of people don't realize that they building. You're building yourself. Yes. There's nothing wrong with getting educated because all those things will come as a helpful hand when you're really starting to plan out stuff. Yes, indeed. Well, I've enjoyed talking to you and I want to thank you for coming on the show. Now, I want you to say anything to your audience that you want them to know. Again, repeat your information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me, Mary. I appreciate it. I enjoyed our conversation. I love the questions you asked me, so thank you. You want to reach me? um, It's Amani Experience on the social. A like Apple, M like Mary, A like Apple, N like Nancy, I. Then the word experience, so it's all one word. That's Instagram. That's Twitch. Um, you can find me, Amani Roberts, on LinkedIn. Twitter is Amani Experience. So feel free to, you You can all go to my website too, AmaniExperience.com. Sign up for my newsletter. I do it like once or twice a month. Give you some good information there. Um, and just, you know, continue to support. Support musicians, the creativity. And if you have any questions or want to learn anything, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always here to chat. All right. Boom in your face. There you go. <laughs> like I said, again, thank you for coming on. I'm we look I'm definitely bring you back when you get your class together and all of the okay. other entities that you have going on. And so we can um really put it out there and let the artists and the people that are in the music industry learn from you. And it's not just about just the music industry. Anyone that wants to even go into business would learn from right. your course. Exactly. So that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Listeners, I want to thank you again for joining me for another episode of Booming Your Face. Please remember to support the podcast on the website. As a reminder, if you'd like to share your Booming Your Face music or share your Booming Your Face moments, or just want to join in the conversation, reach out and email me at boominyourface616 at gmail. 
or visit the website and sign up for the newsletter and share your stories. I'm your host, Mary Kearney. Be blessed. Boom in your face. Boom in your face. Boom in your face. Boom in your face.